All right, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many knows it's good to come into the house of the Lord, though, and have a good time? Amen. It's okay to be able to come into the house of the Lord and laugh. Amen. Have joy and be able to be happy with your brothers and sisters. Amen. Um, so today, though, we're going to continue uh, as we're opening and getting into the word. Uh, we're going to continue in our, our series of being rooted in Christ. Amen. Uh, we, we've talked about faith. We've talked about prayer. We've talked about praise. We've talked about um, what was the other one? Listen, see? Uh, and, oh, just being rooted in Christ. I mean, just simply rooted in Christ. I was like, wait, which one was it? <laughs> Y'all aren't allowed to forget. I'm allowed to forget, all right? <laughs> it's so funny. I was telling someone the other day, I said, sometimes, like, you know, you ever get somebody like, what did the pastor preach about this week? And you're like, okay, wait, what was it? Sometimes people ask me that, and I'm like, wait, what was it? <laughs> uh, but if y'all know me, I can't remember what I have for breakfast. Amen. Uh, my memory is a little out there sometimes. Amen. But today we're going to talk about being rooted in love. Ooh, the four-letter word everybody loves to talk about, love, right? We always wait till Valentine's Day, we talk about love, and we get all these ooey-gooey messages and all these things and whatnot. If y'all know me, uh, I always start every message of love out this way. I am not no ooey-gooey love kind of guy, amen? I was waiting on the, I was waiting on the very uh, aggressive amen coming from that side of the room, uh, but... Uh, Mm. Got it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not the ooey gooey type of love and all those things. And there's, there's a place for that. There's a time for that. But today I want to talk about being rooted in love. And I think it's important that as we're, as we're getting into love, I, I want us to understand that I've kind of saved this for now because we're getting towards the end of our series of being rooted. And I, I've kind of saved this towards now because without love, all the things that we have talked about are simply meaningless. Everything that we've talked about, our praise, our worship, our prayer, all these things that we have talked about, our faith, without love, it is quite simply meaningless. See, we talk about love and we get this misconception of, of love is, is this, this emotional thing. It's this, this beautiful, bright thing. It's red hearts and sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and, and so on and so forth. Like in the world, we've gotten all this idea of, of what love is. But can I tell you, love is so much deeper than just in the feelings and just in the emotions and just in, in the good things there. Love goes so much deeper and stronger than that. Amen. Anyone who's ever been married or, or in a relationship and you love somebody, you know love is, love is tough because you're not always happy with the other person that, you, that you're there with, amen? You don't always agree with each other, amen? Sometimes you, you beat them up. Ain't that right, Sister Rosie? You know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not factual. You should not beat up somebody you love. Uh, um, Sister Rosie's different, all right? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> amen. But, you know, I'm here to tell you today that love is so much deeper. So I think it's important. And, and I think the Bible even teaches us that. And that's where we're going to start today in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to start with verse 1. If you don't have your Bible, it's okay. There will be some up on the screen. If everything goes to plan, right? <laughs> it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to start with... Uh, verse 1. And it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become as a sounding brass of a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, through, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you today. God, I thank you for allowing us to come into your place today. I thank you for allowing us to, to be here and, and just enjoy your presence this morning. And Lord, I just pray today that as we go to enter into your word, Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to receive what it is you would have for us today. God, speak directly to us, Lord God, and I pray today that as I, as I speak that you will hide me behind your cross. I pray that you will not allow my words to come out of my mouth, but allow yours to come out only, and God, just continue to have your way. Lord, we love you and we thank you, and in Jesus' name, and amen. 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 I was looking at these verses, and as I was, as I was going into my studies and, and reading this week, and as I was getting prepared for this, I, I, I enjoyed this portion of the scripture because many times we hear the scripture at weddings. 
when we're talking about love and all the good stuff. But then they, they go to the next verse. They start in verse 4, right? And they talk about how love suffers long and love is, does not envy and love does not strive and it doesn't vain and all those things. But we, we put that on it and we use it as that. But I feel like verse 1 through 3 adds all of the context of how important love is in our life. How important love is in our relationship with God because, because it says that though I speak with tongues of men and angels and I have not love or charity, I am become a sounding brass of a symbol. Uh, all I am is just noise in the wind. Can I tell you, church, that you can show up to church every single Sunday. You can go out and give all your money out to everybody that you know. You can go and give to the poor. You can go do all these things. But if you don't have the love of God in your life, it is simply meaningless doing actions here on earth. And then whenever you are gone, all of those things are gone as well. But if you do all those things and you have the love of God in your heart and you are spreading the love of Christ, what you are doing is far more than just giving out money and just far more than just giving out good things and doing good deeds. We're doing work to build the kingdom. Amen. Not only that, we're doing work to build our own selves up in order to be in the presence of the almighty God. I'm here to tell you today, as we are entering into this, I think it's so important for us to understand that it is not just good enough to show up and do things just because you got to. It's not just good enough to just do things just because you feel like it's the right thing to do. But it's more important that we do stuff because we love God and we want other people to know the love of God. Love is the most important thing that we'll ever do because love is the exact thing that got you and I into a relationship with God. Because if it wasn't for the love of God, you and I would be absolutely nothing. I would have nothing. I wouldn't have any self-worth. I wouldn't have any joy. I wouldn't have my, my life. I wouldn't have these things if it wasn't for a God that loved me. Amen. I'm here to tell you today that we are supposed to understand and give out the true love of God. Now, don't get me wrong. There is, there's multiple types of love. It is okay, the ooey-gooey love and all the romantic nonsense uh, things, okay? Those are okay. <laughs> but when I'm talking about, yeah, there are, stop it. Don't you got somewhere to be, all right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she will hold that against me. She'll be like, you remember what you said? Mm hmm. I still remember what Jesus said that he helps us keep our cool. All right. No, <laughs> Y'all remember that. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but those things are OK. But when we're talking about love, I'm talking about the true love of God. Many times we'll get it misconstrued because you'll hear people say, well, God says that you're supposed to love people. Oh, God says that you're supposed to do this. And God, but that's, he's not loving and accepting are two different things. Amen. I'm going to try not to get ahead of myself here. But it's real easy for us to look at it and say, oh, well, the Bible says that God says you're supposed to love everybody. That's right. I do love everybody. That doesn't mean that I got to accept the things that you do. Amen. Just because I love you doesn't mean that I, I, I got to tell you that everything you're doing is hunky dory. No, I'm going to love you enough to tell you the truth. And I'm still going to love you even though you might not serve God. But I'm going to speak the truth. Amen. Because I'm not just going to be some crashing symbol and making a bunch of noise, amen? I'm going to be doing what God has called me to do. But for us to understand true love and for us to give true love, I think it is important for us to understand the love that was given to us. The love that was given to us a little over 2,000 years ago was that the Jesus Christ came down in the form of man and delivered himself so that way we could live a life with him. John chapter 3, verse 16, I was going to have you turn there. I don't think we need to turn there. Everyone knows, and I know she'll put it up there. It says, but for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Church, I'm here to tell you today, for us to understand true love, we need to understand what God did for us. See, many times I think people think about Jesus and they think about him coming down in the form of man and living this life. And he did. He came down and he lived a perfect life for you and I to have an example of what it is to be who we are supposed to be, to be Christ-like. He lived a perfect life. And then after he lived his perfect life, he was accused of all the things that he had never done and of being awful and all this stuff. And then he was tormented and he was beat and he was tore up and they, they pulled his beard out of his, uh, out of his face. They spit on him. They made a mockery of him. They shoved a crown of thorns on his head and they put him on a cross and they hung him there to die. But he did all of that because he loves us. 
I ain't met another person in my life that has done all that for me. But not only did he come down as that, I think we think about Jesus and we think about the little baby that was born in the manger. But can I tell you, the day Jesus came down on the earth in the form of man was not the day that Jesus was born. The Bible tells us that in the beginning of time, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit says they came together and they created us. Jesus is a part of God right? God is the Trinity, is the three in one, right? So Jesus took off the immortality. Think about this. Imagine you're in heaven. You're in the place where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no tears. You're you're next to God, and God looks at you and says, hey, I need you to go down there. First off, I'm not volunteering, because if you're in the best place, in the perfect place with the almighty God, why would you want to leave the presence of God? That's my selfish, that's my, my, my human mind thing. But I think about this. Jesus was next to God. He was in heaven. He was in his perfect body. He was in all this. He was in the immortality. And he put on mortality just to suffer because he knew that it was the only way that you and I would ever be able to live with God for eternity. That's what he did for us. That's the love that he gave to us when he came down and did all of the things that he did for us. When he lived his, his short 33 years worth of life here on earth and he suffered and he witnessed and he preached and he taught and he did all these things and he healed and he did all these things. He did all of that because he loves and cares for us. And many times I think we get it misunderstood. We talk about the love of God and we, we talk about it and how good it is and how all these things and it really is good. But then we forget that God asks something of us. See, many people will say, well, they've never felt that love and they've never, they've never known that love. Can I tell you, you haven't felt the love because you haven't accepted that love. Amen? Can I tell you, the day that I went down and I knelt at the altar and I gave my heart to God and I, and I truly took on the love of God that he had given me, I felt a love that I have never, ever, ever felt again in my life as deep and as meaningful as that day because there is no love that is greater and more meaningful than the love of God that he gave to me. But I had to accept that love in order to feel it. My God gives it to us freely, but we have to accept it if we want to feel it, church. My point here is that we will talk about all these things and about love and all this, but I'm here to tell you today, I want to challenge you when we talk about love, that your love for and with God needs to be deeper. We're talking about being rooted, and my thing is, is that we need to be rooted in the love of God. We need to be rooted in loving God. We need to be rooted in loving others in order to see the kingdom to be fulfilled. We're talking about this. I want us to understand that I want us to strengthen our relationship with God, but I also want us to strengthen the kingdom of God. Amen? I want us to not just be rooting ourselves in love, but bringing others into it. So my question is, is what is it that God is asking of us when it comes to love? I've said love at least 62 times this morning. I think y'all will understand. (laughs) So what is it that he asks of us? I'm going to ask you guys to turn to Mark chapter 12, verse 29 this morning. Y'all getting hot up in here? Ooh, buddy. All right, all right, all right. Listen, listen. I don't I condone being on your phones, but we're turning the air down. Amen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> listen, this is just as much for me as it is for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. I hear a sound like a mighty Russian wind of cool air coming out of them vents. Amen? <laughs> Ooh. I'm sitting up here like I might not have much left in me when I'm done. Amen. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. As we, as before we enter into this, I want you to understand that as, as Jesus is saying this, what was asked of him is there was a scribe or a lawyer that came up to Jesus. And in Matthew, there's, there's two different instances of this, but in the book of Matthew, it says that they asked Jesus this question about what is the greatest of all commandments? What is the greatest thing that we're supposed to do? But in Matthew, it says that they didn't ask them for knowledge, but it says that they asked them in a way that was trying to trick Jesus, almost trying to tempt Jesus to give the wrong answer. Like, hey, what's the greatest of all the commandments? And this is Jesus' response. The word says, and Jesus answered him, 
The first of all commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. He, they try to tempt him and say, hey, give us one of the commandments and say, which one's the best one of them all? And he says, you know what? I'm going to give you something a little different. That if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself, all the other commandments, they're covered. In the book of Matthew, it says that all the commandments that are given to the, to the prophets, they, they are covered under these two, right? That's just my own words. Don't, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not great with quoting sometimes, right, from the top of my head. Like I said, I forget. Amen? But he says all these things are covered. And so today I want to ask you this. When we're talking about love, Jesus gives us two commands. The first one is to love God, our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Many times, this is what I was talking about earlier, though, people will say, well, God says that you should love your neighbor. We'll get it misconstrued and whatnot. But I believe there's a reason that the first commandment was that we first have to love God. Because if we don't love God, how are we going to love our neighbor? Amen? How many's ever had that neighbor that, boy, is it hard to love? Mm-hmm. They just loud. They be doing stuff. They be blowing stuff up they'd be playing music at two o'clock in the morning and you're just like please calm down there's some guy in the basement playing video games yelling at the video games all night and you're trying to sleep amen uh you know <laughs> you got all these if you've ever how many's ever lived in an apartment uh-huh okay i just say then if you've ever lived in an apartment you've had one of them neighbors amen the guy that for some reason at three o'clock in the morning has to walk around and the floors are paper thin and you're just like buddy pick up your feet because you hear <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh or it seems like they're moving their refrigerator every night at two o'clock in the morning like what are you doing buddy we've had those neighbors sometimes they're a little hard to love amen but it says that we first need to love God and so the question is is when Jesus looks at him he says love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind that's what I want to focus on today I want to ask you four questions and this is where I want to challenge you today and I really want you to ask yourself these questions and I really want you to think about it the first question I want to ask you is do you love the Lord your God with all of your heart see Jesus didn't say I want you to just love the Lord your God with some of your heart. I don't want you to just love God with just a little bit of it or with what you've got left over. I don't want you to give your heart to everybody else and give me what's left over. But he says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Ask yourself today, do I love God with all of my heart? I'm not talking about the thing that's beating inside of our chest, but I'm talking about the heart of who we are. I'm talking about the very driving force of who we are, of the decisions we make, of the emotions that we feel, of the things that we are, the thing that drives the deepest desires of who we are. Do you love God with all of it? We talked a few weeks ago about, about our heart, or it's probably been a couple of months ago, but we talked about our heart. Can I tell you today that the book of Matthew tells us that out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth is going to speak. The Bible also tells us in Jeremiah that our hearts are gratefully deceitful. That our heart will deceive us if we are following just our heart. And also the book, in, uh, book of Proverbs tells us that we need to guard our heart because out of it comes all of the things of life of who we are. Your heart is what makes you make the decisions that you make each and every day because it is all about how you feel and about everything that makes you feel the way that you feel. When someone tells me that I should follow my heart, I say I probably should not. I probably should follow Christ. Because if I'm following my heart, I promise you that nothing is going to turn out good for any of us. Amen? I'm here to tell you today, though, that when he says that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, what it means is that the desire of our heart should be to honor and glorify God with everything that we do. That when we wake up in the morning, my decision is that I want to honor and glorify God. That when I put my head down at night, that I want to honor and glorify God. When I do my job, I want to honor and glorify God. When our heart is fully invested and in the love Love of God, we don't want to do things that do not bring Him glory. 
But when the word says that out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks, many times we will use the excuse, well, God knows my heart. We want to say, oh, well, God knows. That was just, ah. Listen, I'm not here to tell you that you're not going to make mistakes, amen? You ever smacked yourself with a hammer? You ever had an accident happen? You ever have something go wrong, amen? I'm not sitting here saying that if you don't say, oh, praise Jesus, that was the greatest thing that I've ever had happen to me, amen? I thank you, Lord, for the three crushed bones in my thumb, amen? I praise God that I am all sorts of jacked up here laying on the side of the road in a hurt kind of way, amen? I'm not telling you that's what you got to do. But what I'm saying is, is that when our heart is in line with the love of God, amen, that we can go through troubles and we can go through trials and we can still praise God because he's good. We can still glorify God because he's good and we can still desire to honor him even in the troubles. I'm here to tell you today that we need to take an examination of our heart because many people in the church today, they want to do like a 90-10 split. And can I tell you, the 90% is not for God. Amen. We want to act like we can give God 10% of our heart and it's enough. And then we want him to do 100% of the work. Amen. Our heart's desire needs to line up with the word of God. It needs to be fully. He says, love God with all of your heart. Church, if the body of Christ today loved the, the Lord with all of their heart, we wouldn't see the things that we're seeing in the world today. But the heart is deceitfully wicked when we allow our heart to do what it wants to do. And that's what's got the result of the world that we have today. They would say, oh, well, we don't like that, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to listen to that. That's not what God calls us to do, amen? Oh, I don't like how that makes me feel, so I'm going to make a, I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to change everything in this. We will change our identity. We will change our, our mindset. We will change our life. We will change our spouses. We will change all those things just as much as we change our, our clothes, amen? We will change it more than we change our socks, and we'll do all these things because of the way we feel. But I'm here to tell you today that we need to examine our heart daily, we need to protect our heart, and we need to love God with all of our heart. If my desires begin to take over and my desire is not to glorify God and to be with Him, then my heart is not in the right place. Amen? Listen, this might not be fun to hear, but it's the truth. Amen? We need to examine our heart and we need to be fully invested in loving God with all of our heart. The second question I have for you today is, do you love God with all of your soul. Do you love God with every ounce of your being of the real you? See, I look at your soul as the real you. See, we look at this worldly body and we say, oh, I've got this and whatnot. When, I, when we're talking about our soul, when I look at what we're talking about, I'm talking about the very being that God made you, your soul, the thing that is going to live on for eternity Do you love God with that? See, our soul is the one thing that that we have that's different from us, from animals. Amen? Right? I always like to make the joke, you're not going to go out hunting in the woods, be just going down there with your gun and whatnot, and roll up on a bunch of deer having church service. Amen? (laughs) If you do, run. Run. Because there is something way worse happening there than you want to get involved with. Amen? All right. First off, I, nuh-uh, listen, I, I ain't going to have enough ammo. I'm just going to start blasting. Like, I ain't being no part of this. Amen? I've seen what Jesus did with the pigs and threw them off. The, uh-uh, no, sir. <laughs> Church, I'm here to tell you the one thing that differentiates you and me from everybody else is our soul. Because when we die, we are going to continue to live for eternity. And can I tell you, if I don't make the choice that with the real me, with my soul, to serve God and love him with all of that, that I cannot expect him the day that I stand before judgment to stand before them and him to choose my soul to live with him for eternity. Amen. Church, he gives us the the option, but he gives us the command that we are to love God with everything in our soul that is far more than about the earth. It's far more than about the here and the now, but it is about you and I to serve and to love God. God with everything in us. Church, I'm here to tell you today that when we come in Christ, and this is what I think, well, this is what I'm talking about whenever I say our soul and the real us. When we come in Christ, the word in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says that we are a new creation. That the old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, right? So what that tells us is that when God changes us, when he fixes us, the physical might not change. Well, on the outside might not look any different, but my soul is new. 
that means that I can't pervert it, I can't uh, junk it up, I can't mess it all up with the old stuff, right? Because I have to love him with all of the new me. Because when I'm a new creation in Christ, my desire should be to walk with Christ. It should be to talk with Christ. It should be to avoid the old things and not try to get it all dirtied up with the old stuff. Too many times, though, we want to give our heart to Christ and we want to give our whole self over to God and then we want to pick the old stuff up because we like it. Can I tell you, there's no place for that. It's like getting a new, new pair of sneakers. You ever got them nice new white sneakers? You know that you're not supposed to buy white shoes. You're not supposed to buy them because you know that they're going to get dirty. I've never been a shoe guy because I know they're just going to get dirty. I have had the same, yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Brian over there holding up his new, nice, nice, clean shoes. I don't think I've ever seen a dirty pair of shoes on Brother Brian, amen? I'm pretty sure he goes and works on the bricks and stuff like that, and he comes back out nice and clean still. I don't know how he does it. Now, <laughs> I'm here to tell you today, though, I, I have, I've had a new pair of shoes and whatnot. I'm like, I'm going to try to keep them nice and clean. And as you're walking through stuff, you know, you walk out there in the grass and you're like real slow because you don't want to mess up the dirty shoes. And you see those guys and, and you're just like, listen, just go one good time. I bought my truck used because it had a little a couple of dents and dings in it. And you know what? I'm thankful because I'm not worried about the next time I get a little dent and ding in it. Amen. But too many times we don't, we will treat the things of this world like our shoes and our trucks and the things that we love better than we will treat our soul. Because we're not worried about dirtying it up and junking it up because we like the way it feels and we like the old things that we have. But can I tell you to love God with all your soul is to reject the things of your past, to reject the things of this world and to choose to serve him with every ounce of your being every single day. We can't want and desire the old junk if we want to love God the way that we are supposed to love God. Our soul is so important, and we treat it as if it's just another thing. Can I tell you today, church, we need to start treating it like it's something, amen? It is what we have. It is our connection with the Holy Spirit. It is our connection with, Lord, with the Lord. And it is the one thing that we will continue to have. This body is going to pass away. I'm going to go one day and I'm going to be in the ground. They're going to throw a bunch of dirt on top of me. Amen. At that point, I might already be powder. Who knows what I'm going to be. Amen. I ain't going to be here. To be honest, I always tell you, what do you want to do when you die? I was like, I don't care. To be quite honest, you could shoot me out of a cannon. I, I ain't going to be there. Ain't going to bother me. Amen. That's going to be my earthly self. I, please don't do that. But my, my kids would be like, first off, what happened to dad? Uh, listen, daddy took a nice trip. You can do whatever you want to do with me. Amen. Because I'm not going to be here. But what is going to happen is that the word tells me that, that to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Because when this old worldly body is doing whatever it's doing down here. Amen. My soul is going to be brought up into the heavens and I'm going to be in present with the Lord. Amen. We need to start treating our soul and loving God with all of it as if we are going to present ourselves before the almighty God. Church, if your soul, if you can ask yourself this and say, my soul, my very being, who I am, if it's not ready to be present in front of the almighty God, it needs to be ready because you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised that we make it out of these church house doors. Amen. We live in a world today that we don't know what's going to happen. Amen. You might get in a wreck. You might get shot. You might just fall over with a heart attack these days because you ate too many McDonald's chicken nuggets. Amen. Who knows what's in them things? But I'm here to tell you today, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know where we're going to go. But if my soul is in love with God, not just loving him, but in love and fully invested in God, I know that my soul is ready to see the almighty God. Amen. We need to get rid of the old and be in with the new. So does your soul truly love God? Third question I want you to ask yourself is, do you love God with all of your mind? Mm, oh, the mind. How many times? Oh, they got a mind of their own. My daughter, my son have a mind of their own. And the only thing that you hear in Asher's mind is drums. Drums? Hmm, drums? I'm pretty sure that's all he does. He will walk around. Milk in one hand, drums. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Asher, say mama, drums. <laughs> if you know Asher, he will walk in the church doors and he will pass every. He'll pass Mimi, he'll pass Papa, he will pass Sissy, he will pass Mama, he'll pass Daddy, and he'll run right up there. Drums? Waiting for somebody to open them doors so he can go in there. He got a mind of his own. 
Sadie the same way. Can I tell you too many times, though, we will look at our mind and say, oh, well, they just, we've got a mind of our own. Oh, my mind, you know, just over here. Can I tell you today, church, that the mind needs to be fully in love with God because it needs to be fully focused on God. We got to quit allowing our mind to run amok on who we are and start making a mess of who we are. Amen. Can I tell you, your mind will tell you that your feelings are more important than the truth. Your mind will lie to you and tell you that everybody hates you. They will tell you that God doesn't love you. Your mind will tell you that you aren't worth it. Your mind will make you feel like you are less than who you are because your mind likes to go all these places because it is in the flesh. But can I tell you, like we talked about last week when Jehoshaphat, he was looking at that army and he called upon God and he says, but God, my eyes are upon you. Can I tell you today, church, that if we will take our eyes and our mind and start focusing on the almighty God, we would know what it is to love God with our whole mind. We won't let our mind decide and make decisions based off of feelings and off of these things. It won't be about what feels good. It won't be about what we're thinking or whatever, but it will be making a decision to decide to follow Christ no matter what. Jesus loved us with all of his mind. I believe that because in the garden, just before Jesus was taken away, I remember the word says that he went into the garden and he went to pray. And the disciples, they were out there, of course, sleeping because what else are you going to do whenever someone's praying for a long time? I don't even think he was gone that long, but it says that the disciples were sleeping and, and Jesus, he was in the garden and he was in there and he was praying to the Lord and he was talking to God. And the Bible says that he, he talked to the Lord and he says, Father, if there be any other way. Let this cup pass from my lips. But God, if not, let it be so. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus had feelings and he had emotions and he had a mind just like you and I, and yet he still chose to do what he did. He still chose to go up there where he knew the pain would be inflicted. He still chose to go up there to where he knew he'd be mocked. He went up there where he knew he'd be tortured. He knew he went up there where he was going to be killed. Why? Because he loved us enough to die for us. Church, I'm here to tell you today, we need to start putting our mind back into subjection and saying, God, I know this isn't what I want to do. This isn't what is making me feel good, but God, I'm choosing to follow and serve you with my whole mind because I love you. Church, if our mind is running all over the place and we are choosing to do all the things that we don't want or that we shouldn't be doing because it's just what we want to do, our mind is not fully in love and focused on God. Church, we need to get our mind back into a place that says, God, I'm going to look at you, and I'm going to do like Paul says. It says, I'm going to die daily. Church, we need to start putting ourselves when we wake up in the morning and say, listen, i got to look at myself. Maybe I need to get a mirror and say, James, I call myself junior in my head, to be honest. (laughs) Listen here, buddy. Actually, you know what's funny? I'll be talking to myself, and sometimes I call myself James. Sometimes I call myself junior. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I can't even figure out who I am. But I need to look at myself and say, listen, you need to get behind yourself and you need to focus on the almighty God. Church, Paul woke up and he, every single day and he says, I die daily. He put his feelings, he put his thoughts and all those things into subjection and said, God, no matter what it lands me, I'm going to serve you. God, no matter where it puts me, God, I'm going to serve you because my mind is fully focused on you. My question today to to you is this, are you allowing your mind to run freely and control everything that you are doing? Are you allowing your mind to run amok on you and not doing anything about it? Church, it's time that we put our mind back into subjection and love God with all of our thoughts, with all of our feelings, with all of those things, with everything that comes in that with our mind, we need to love God and we need to choose him each and every day. The last question I have for you, this is, do you love God with all your strength? See, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, says, love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. I think you could finish there, but I love the book of Mark because he adds strength. And I think strength hits us so home as human beings. Because many times, we don't give God our full strength, amen? We don't give him our best effort. When he talks about strength, what I believe he says is, do you give God your best effort or do you just give him what's left over? 
If I love God with all my strength, that means that I give him the best. If you've watched uh, Men in Black movies, amen, <laughs> y'all ever watched that? And he, he pulls the, the table over there making all the noise and stuff like that. And he's like, what are we here for? And the guy stands up. And he's like, because to be the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> Do we wake up in the morning and give God the best of the best of the best of who we are? Church, I'm here to tell you today, we will put all of our time and our efforts into the things that we love. Think about it. You will put every bit of ounce of strength and, and, and effort that you have in something you love. Me and Brother Ron, we love going hunting. Brother uh, uh, John, sister, uh, Brother Owen, I almost called him Sister Owen. That's all right. My bad. Hey, he ain't here. You know what I'm saying? It's his own fault. <laughs> We will put our effort into hunting. You know why? Because when I go out hunting, I want to be profitable. I want to go out there and I want to have the best chance to get me a deer. Amen. I want to be able to put some meat in the freezer for my family. I do it, and I love doing it. And I love getting out there in the woods. We'll put our best efforts into going fishing. Ladies, you'll put your best effort into looking nice and getting your nails did and doing. I don't know what you know. I'm not all y'all. Okay. <laughs> you'll do all you'll put your best effort into something but i'm here to tell you today church we will put our best efforts and we'll put all of our strength into the thing that we love if we do it subconsciously we don't even have to think about it. you don't even have to try can you ask yourself today am i putting my best effort into loving god with all of who i am or am i just waiting until the end of the day and out of obligation, giving him exactly what I've got left. I'll put my whole heart in all this. I'm so tired. I'm so wore out. But you know what, God? I've got to open my Bible and I've got to read it because I, I know it's what I'm supposed to do. And we'll give God that, that last 5% of what we've got left in the day. Church, we will make time for the things we want. You will make time to get up in the morning and go get coffee before you show up to work. You will make time to get up in the morning and get yourself freshened up and, and look nice before you show up to work, not looking like a hot mess. We will get up and, and we will put our effort in all these things. And, and I'm not telling you that that's wrong, but what I'm telling you is that the moment that we start putting more effort into the things of this world and into the things that we care about more than we start putting it into our relationship with God or putting it into the things of God, that is the moment that we stop putting all of our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength into God. Church, I'm here to tell you today, we need to ask ourselves, do I love God with all of my strength? Am I really putting all of my effort into loving Him and serving Him? I'm not telling you that if you don't wake up first thing in the morning and read your Bible before you do anything, that you're going to hell. Amen? I'm not telling you that if you don't wake up at 4 o'clock every morning and spend time in prayer, that you're not doing it right. Amen? But if that's what God's called you to do, that's what God's called you to do. But what I am telling you, though, is that whenever we say, God, I'm going to serve you, God, I'm going to read your word, God, I'm going to pray to you, if we are not putting our whole strength and our whole effort into that and we're only giving God what is left over, we are not giving him enough. We talk about strength, church. I believe this is the exact reason why the church of God of America and of the world today has grown weak. Because we are no longer putting our strength into loving God. Church, it is so important now more than ever that we put our whole strength into loving God. Our full effort. More than just what we have left. More than just what is, is left over and done. Amen? Our whole strength. Church, I know this might be tough. I know these might be tough questions to ask yourself. But it's time that we start taking an examination of our love for God. Because one day we're going to stand before God and he's going to take an examination of our love for him. Church, can I tell you today, if we can't learn to love God here, how do we expect to live the rest of eternity standing before Him and loving Him? I think many times we think, well, it'll be easy because I'll be before God. There'll be no pain. There's no tears. There's no shame and stuff like and all of that. But can I tell you today, it's not enough to just wait till then. We need to start now. Amen? We need to love God with our heart, our soul, our mind, and all of our strength. But not only do we need to do it for that, we need to do it for others. See, he says the second command is this, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. How are we going to testify to somebody about the love of God if we're not fully living in the love of God? How are we going to testify to somebody about how much God loves them if we're not living as if God loves us that much? How are we going to speak the truth to somebody when it's difficult and love them enough to not just accept the nonsense, but to love them enough to do that? How are we going to do that if our strength and our hope and all of our soul is not invested into loving God? 
Church, it's time that we push past this idea of that we just love people and we accept them, but we love God enough first to put ourselves into a place to be put down, to be ridiculed, to be made fun of and whatnot, that we can show them the love of God. Church, this Rooted series has not just been about you strengthening your relationship with God, but it's about showing other people how they are supposed to be rooted in love with God. And how are we going to do that if we're not willing to put ourselves into a place, to be putting ourselves into this part of our life, to be able to show people how much God truly loves them? Can I tell you today, you can tell somebody how much they are loved by God while also telling them the truth that God does not accept the nonsense of their life. But can I tell you, if you're just doing it because you think you're right and you don't do it with love, you're just making symbol sounds and nonsense at the, like we talked about in the beginning, and you're not furthering the kingdom of God. Church, it is up to us as the body of Christ to grow the kingdom of God by spreading the word of God. It is up to us to put our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength into serving the Lord with everything in us so that other people can know the love of God. Church, it's not enough to just get by anymore. It's not enough to just, to just skate by by the skin of our teeth. Church, God didn't call us to do that. My God called me to be more than a conqueror. My God called me to be victorious because I walk in Him. My God called me to be a witness for Him. My God calls me to testify for Him. Church, the Word says that we overcome the enemy, not just by the blood of the Lamb, but by the word of our testimony. I'm here to tell you today, though, that if we don't fully invest ourselves in the love of God, there's not much to testify about because we're still living in the same junk. Church, I'm here to tell you today, we do need to start loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. but we need to love ourselves enough to invest ourselves in the love of God. We need to love our neighbor as ourself, which means we first need to love God with everything about us. Church, I'm here to tell you today, we need to get ourselves in a place to be able to show the love of God. And the only way that we're going to truly show the love of God is if we truly begin to love God with our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. Can I tell you that when you focus on God in that way, you don't have to go, oh, I got to do it. You don't have to say, oh, God, I just, ah, you know, I'm not really feeling that. But you could say, God, you know what? I might be tired. I might be weary. I might not be feeling the best, but God, I'm going to do what you've called me to do, and I know that you're going to give me the strength to do everything that I need to do, and God, I know that you're going to be glorified in it. Church, it's time that we take our love for God deeper than just being surface level. It's time that we take it more than just being the ooey-gooey love, good stuff. God, I'm going to love you while things are good, and I'm going to question you while things are bad. <laughs> We need to take it past that and say, God, I might not like it, but I still love you, and I know that you still love me. Church, we need to take our love for God deeper and deeper and deeper. And when you think it's deep enough, you need to take a few more shovel full and get down a little bit deeper. Amen. Can I tell you, you can never be too deep and too far into the love of God. Amen. You can never love him too much, and he's never going to love you too much. Amen. He loves you more than life itself. He loves you more than anything else in this world. And every day I desire that I could just get a little bit deeper in my love with him. And can I tell you, when we talk about faith and we talk about prayer and we talk about praise, the more that I love God, the more that I praise my God. Amen. The more that I love my God, the more faith that I've got in my God, the more that I want to communicate with him. Because when you love something, amen, you protect it. When you love something, you take care of it. When you love something, you invest into it. So we need to root ourselves in that love with him. Amen. Amen. I'm asking if y'all would stand with me today.